more than 20 candidates have registered for next year's presidential race in Afghanistan. On the list is a mix of those currently in power, including warlords, militia leaders and tribal chiefs. While that concoction is marring optimism at the prospect of the first democratic transfer of power in Afghanistan's history, with incumbent President Hamid Karzai out of the game due to term limits, radical Islamic movements such as the Taliban are now seeking their way back into the government. Well, take a look at this map. It's based on media analysis and shows the scope of the Taliban presence and their target regions. And uh, we'll be giving you more opinion uh, from Afghanistan on this as we spoke to Afghanistan expert Jerry Van Dyke, who was kidnapped and held captive by the Taliban. He believes the militant group will reject the vote result no matter what. They consider democracy a Western religion. For them, Islam, of course, which is submission to God, which would be the rule of God, which is what they want, and democracy, meaning the rule of man, is anathema to them. This is, they are diametrically opposed to this. So for them to see in their eyes a Western religion come to power truly by having a democratically elected president step down and a new one come forward is not something they're going to want at all. You have right now NATO, particularly the United States, depending upon the Afghan National Army and the police force, which number 352,000 to take over. You have the Taliban, who number approximately 20 to 30,000 at the most, and you have the Taliban on the upswing. You have a you have a desertion rate of up to 30 percent in the Afghan National Army. Can they stand up to the Taliban? There are many people, and I am one of them, who question whether they can. The United States and its allies may pull out in total in about 2014, but can they afford that? Because that will mean 12 years, perhaps, have gone to waste. Well, we are now joined by the Afghan presidential candidate, Daoud Sultan Soy. Mr. Sultan Soy, thank you so much for joining us here on RT to discuss the situation in your country and how, in fact, the campaign will be going on. Well, the Taliban has vowed, as we hear, to disrupt the April vote. In your opinion, how will U.S. troop withdrawal affect the poll? I think, uh, first of all, let me mention about the Taliban. If the Taliban really want the Americans to leave the country, then they should allow uh, candidates who are not tainted, candidates who are speaking on behalf of the people, to come and replace this uh, corrupt government so we can f pave the way for the American withdrawal. A corrupt government where the people are not with the, that government cannot uh, guarantee stability. We will guarantee uh, a stable situation so the Taliban can s come and sit and talk with us so we can have a stable Afghanistan where there's no foreign troop uh, requirement in this country. Okay, but, uh, you know, the question is, the situation is very volatile in your country and uh, whether that will be possible to do at all. I mean, let's talk about now about the other candidates who are campaigning and you yourself as a candidate, have you been threatened or do you know perhaps of others being threatened by the Taliban? I'm threatened by the same threats that the Taliban and the the rest of the people of this country are threatened, which is corruption, which is, which is the warlords running this country, the mafia running this country. That's a big threat for this country. And I think if we remove that threat and if we have a good election where the Taliban also can see that the change is a positive change, we can remove all the threats where the excuses will be gone and the people will stand behind a government where we can start peace talks. Okay, but the question, of course, is how can you remove those threats? I think uh, the biggest threat to this country is not the Taliban or, or, or armed uh, resistance. It's the corruption. It's the gap between the people and the government. And if we remove that threat, we, if we fill that void with uh, rule of law and good governments, the Taliban will not have an excuse to hide behind the people of Afghanistan and, and uh, uh, run for cover and uh, uh, do what they're doing now. We are inviting them to come and join us so we can create peace in this country and bring okay, well, peace to Well, the Taliban are quite strong still. I mean, recently, a regional governor defected to the Taliban. So how common is that? And what does it actually mean? 
I don't think the Taliban are uh, that, that strong. It's the weakness of this government that makes that make them look strong. It's the corruption. It's the uh, the uh, dis disaffection of the people that make the Taliban strong, and they're swimming in a sea of disenchantment and a sea of uh, disapproval in an ocean of of corruption that is uh, dividing the people and the government. That is the strength of the Taliban, not the uh, the appeal uh, in, among the people. The po Taliban, if this government wasn't there, the Taliban will have no ground to do what they're doing. Dowd Sultan Afghan presidential candidate, thank you so much for talking to us here on RT.